Transport phenomena in biosystem, module 6, equations of change for isothermal systems, part 2, segment 2, application of equations of change to soft flow problems. With me, Yusuf from School of Life Sciences and Technology, Institute Technology, Bandung. Previously, we have discussed about equation of change in terms of substantial derivative. In this segment, we will discuss about equations of change to solve flow problems. To describe the flow of a Newtonian fluid at constant temperature, we need in general the equation of continuity, the equation of motion, the components of tau, the equation of state, and the equations of viscosity. These equations, along with the necessary boundary and initial conditions, Determine completely the pressure, density, and velocity distributions in the fluid. For constant density and viscosity, we can use the equation of continuity and the Navier Stokes equation together with the initial and boundary conditions to determine the pressure and velocity distributions. All key equations are available in the textbook. Particularly, table B1 for Newton's law of viscosity, table B4 for equation of continuity, table B5 for equation of motion in terms of tau, and table B6 for equation of motion for Newtonian fluid with constant rho and mu for Cartesian, cylindrical, and spherical coordinate system. Beginning students should not concern themselves with the derivation of these equations but students should be very familiar with the tables in Appendix B and be able to use them for setting up equations to solve flow problems. In this segment, we illustrate how to set up equations and solve some problems involving steady isothermal laminar flow of Newtonian fluids. The relatively simple analytical solutions that will be discussed in this segment is as a preparation for moving on to the analytical or numerical solution of more complex problems, the use of various approximate methods, or the use of dimensional analysis. This segment shall discuss a few problems for stable flows that are known to exist. In each case, we begin by making some postulates about the form of the pressure and velocity distribution, that is, we guess how P and V should depend on position in the problem being studied. By doing so, we can discard all the terms in the equations of continuity and motion that are unnecessary according to the postulates that we have made. For example, if one postulates that Vx is a function of Y alone, other unnecessary terms can be discarded. When all the unnecessary terms have been eliminated, one is frequently left with a small number of relatively simple equations, and if the problem is sufficiently simple, an analytical solution can be obtained. It must be emphasized that, in listing the postulates, one makes use of intuition, which is based on our daily experience with flow phenomena. After we have finished the discarding process, we may remove some of the assumptions to get a better solution. A complete solution to a fluid dynamics problem requires the specification of the limits on the stable flow regimes as well as any ranges of unstable behavior. That is, we have to develop a map showing the various flow regimes that are possible. Usually, analytical solutions can be obtained for only the simplest flow regimes whereas the remainder of the information is generally obtained by experiment or by very detailed numerical solutions. We will discuss two examples, particularly flow through a circular tube and flow of a falling film that have been discussed in Module 4 that have been solved using the approach of shell momentum balance, but now with the use of the equations of change. For the flow through a circular tube, we postulate that V equals to dou Z V Z as a function of R and Z. This postulate implies that there is no radial flow and no tangential flow and that V Z does not depend on theta. 
Consequently, we can discard many terms from the tabulated equations of change, leaving equation 6, 6 until equation 6, 9. Hence, the partial derivatives in the second term on the right side of equation 6, 9 can be replaced by ordinary derivative. By using modified pressure, P equals to P plus rho G H, where H is the height above some arbitrary getum plane, we avoid the necessity of calculating the components of G in cylindrical coordinates and we obtain a solution valid for any orientation of the axis of the tube. Equation 6-7 and equation 6-8 show that P is a function of Z alone and the partial derivative in the first term of equation 6-9 may be replaced by an ordinary derivative. The only way that we can have a function of R plus a function of Z equal to 0 is for each term individually to be constant, say C is all, so that equation 6-9 reduced to equation 610. The P and the VZ equations can be integrated and the results are shown in equation 611 and equation 612. The four constants of integration can be found from the boundary conditions and the final solutions can be expressed by equation 613 and equation 614. Now, let's consider the flow of a falling film. We postulate a steady state flow with constant density but with viscosity depending on x. We postulate as before that the x and y components of the velocity are zero and that vz equals to vz as a function of x. With this postulates, the equation of continuity is identically satisfied. According to table B1, the only non-zero components of tau are tau x z equals to tau z x equals to minus mu dv z per dx. The components of the equation of motion in terms of tau are from table B5 as shown in equation 615 until equation 617. Where beta is the angle shown in module 4, segment 3. Integration of equation 615 gives equation 618, in which f as a function of y and z is an arbitrary function. Equation 616 shows that f cannot be a function of y. We next recognize that the pressure in the gas phase is very nearly constant at the prevailing atmospheric pressure. Therefore, at the gas-liquid interface x equals to zero, the pressure is also constant at the value of atmospheric pressure. Consequently, F can be set equal to atmospheric pressure and the pressure can be expressed by equation 619. Eventually, equation 617 can be transformed to equation 620, which is the same as obtained using the approach of shell momentum balance. For the next segment, we will discuss about dimensional analysis of the equations of change. Until then, I am Yusuf from Institute Technology Bandung.